Hoxie's TAG 6.0. It is designed specifically for uh, students in my writing research technology spring 2015 at Rowan University. Uh, in this tutorial, uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, create the archive, how to gain access to Twitter, how to get permissions from Twitter, and then how to populate your archive uh, with tweets based on your uh, hashtag of of choice. Okay, so uh, you will notice that there are three tabs open. You have the course website, your 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 Gmail account, and um, your Twitter account. Now, one of the things for this to work is that you need to have your Twitter account associated with your mobile phone. So, under your avatar on Twitter, on the right side, go to settings, which is where I am right now, and then under mobile. Uh, please configure your mobile phone. And when you've completed that, go ahead and set how you want to be notified. And it just takes a couple minutes um, to do that, so you're not being notified nonstop. You want to sort of uncheck most of those boxes, most likely. Uh, once you have done that, uh, go back to the Course tab and click on uh, Tags under Course Related Apps and Sites, and you will be brought to a uh, page for this. Uh, the home page and then click on get tags and then tags uh, new sheets and what this will be doing is it will be bringing up a template that Martin Hoxie has created for us uh, we are going to copy this template into our own uh, Google Drive and from there we'll be able to set up uh, the archive so go to file and then make a copy and you're going to want to call this uh, whatever hashtag you're studying, Spring, so I'll do Springsteen uh, Archive. If you are creating another archive based on the same hashtag, you can just say two or something like that. Uh, either one is perfectly fine. So just click OK. And it will take a couple seconds for that one to be created, and it should be created in a new tab for you. I'm using the Chrome browser. I find that it works best when setting these things up and displaying the visuals. Uh, you can use any browser you want, really, but I don't recommend Internet Explorer. So uh, it's, it's just too clunky. Okay, so now you will see that I have the archive set up here. It says Springsteen Archive up at top. You can close out of the other two tabs that we were just in because we're not going to need those anymore. And you will see, or you should see at the top, in the menu bar, a tags menu option. If you do not see that, click enable custom menu and <clears throat> it will appear. So now we need to get authorization through Twitter. Uh, if you set yours up in class, you should already have access and authorization through Twitter. You should not have to go through this part of the process again, but please do follow along just so you can verify that. Uh, even if you're creating a new archive, your authorization codes should still be uh, applied in those new archives. So under Tags, we want to go click uh, Set Up Twitter Access. And this app will the authorization to run. Click Continue. You'll get another pop-up window. And you want to click Accept. Please make sure you're only logged into one email address or one Gmail account right now. If you are not, you may get an error message and you might have to start again. So click Accept. And you will be brought to a new window, Twitter authorization. Now, those of you who have set this up in class already, um, you should see API keys here already. So you can just click clicking Next and you'll be all right. Those of you who are not in class or do not see API keys right here, right click on this link and open a new tab. This will bring you to the developer site um, where you actually create the name of an application. So here you'll want to put in the name of your archive. So I'm going to be calling it the Springsteen hashtag archive and a description, I would just say an archive of Springsteen hashtag. 
You can describe whatever you want. Here, what you'll want to put is the, the website for your blog, your blog website. And you can get that from the course website. Um, make sure you put in the HTTP and the colon, col colon and the slash slash. I'll be doing williamwolf.org, but for, or, so it's similar to yours, Bill's testblog.wordpress.com. Okay, and make sure when you are putting in your website that you do include the .wordpress.com. That's very important, as well as the HTTP colon slash slash. Very important. Uh, for the callback URL, you go back to the archive tab, and under the second bullet next to important, you'll see include callback URL. Copy this URL. Okay, copy that, and go back to the other tab, and paste it in. Now when you do paste it, make sure that you have the final uh, slash, and there are no spaces. Sometimes you copy a space. Uh, please make sure there are no spaces uh, before the HTTPS. Okay, scroll down. These are the developer agreements, which we read for class the other day, so we should all be set with that. Click yes, I agree, and then create your Twitter application. Okay. And hopefully you will see your application has been created. Please take a moment to review and address your application settings. Uh, if you are getting an error message, uh, please follow the instructions for what the error message says. Some error messages uh, might be uh, that you have not verified your Twitter email address. There will be a URL there for you to go to. Copy that URL, paste it into a new tab, and go there. Uh, if you are getting an error message about your the URL is not correct, please make sure that you have your HTTP colon slash slash. Make sure you have the full blog name dot wordpress dot com. Make sure that there are no spaces before the HTTP in your callback URL. Uh, if you are still having trouble, send me an email and we'll and a screenshot of what you've got here on your on your page, and we'll try to get it to work. Okay, so once you have become successful, right here, uh, you will click on keys and access tokens, and we're going to need to copy the API key and the API secret. So copy this. Again, make sure you're just copying the letters and numbers. Go back to your, your archive page, paste in the API key, and then copy and paste in the API secret, and then click Next. Next. Sign in with Twitter. Authorize. And this is now Twitter giving you permission to access the tweets. And you need to have this authorization process to be able to do that. Once you get your success window, that's great. You can close it down. Close that tab down and close down the application management tab and go back to your archive. Okay. Now, if you've got some error messages going through that process, again, please send me an email specifically with what's going on. If you can take a screenshot, that would be great. There is a link to um, how to take screenshots on Macs and PCs. Uh, on the course website, every page of the course website. Okay, so once we have done this, uh, you can now enter your search term, and that would be Springsteen. Now, if you are concerned that, uh, or if you want to make sure you get each variety of hashtags, so maybe some people are capitalizing the S, you can put or Springsteen or Springsteen, and it will get uh, either, it will get both. It'll grab tweets that have one of them or the other one. Okay, um, you can keep these at default. If you want to reduce spam, you can increase your follower count. The follower counts for the 
application to like 30 and you'll know that those are probably most likely not spam files and the default period is right here you just want to get them from that particular time period okay uh, once you have done that and you've set your ent entered your your term go up to the tags menu and click um, run now and depending on how many tweets you're going to be grabbing uh, it will take some time okay, so it's running the script As you'll see, it takes a little while, and it, when it's finished, it will say finished. And you should be able to see how many tweets and unique tweets are in your archive, when it started and when, it, uh, when the first tweet was and when the last tweet was. So the first tweet was, um, this is February 5th and then February 13th, seven days worth of tweets. Also at this point, I'd like you to go to tags and then add summary sheet. And if you look down below over here, you will see these two sheets and the summary sheet will appear. And then add dashboard sheet. And that will appear. The last thing we're going to do before we look at the tweets is we're going to publish this to the web so that the visualization part of this uh, system can work. So go to file, publish to the web and you'll see a pop-up window and all you want to do here is click publish and then OK and then you can just X this out. Okay, And this should all now be set up. Uh, so now what we can do is you can go down and you can see the tweets. You can click on the archive tab and you will see all of the tweets listed here. Very exciting. Uh, 1,700 or so tweets. We've got the username, the text, when it was created, the time it was created, geo coordinates, the language that it was used, and so on. You can scroll to the right. Oh, the cat is banging at the door. <laughs> Ellie, not now, little girl. Uh, from the user ID, the source, profile images, how many followers they have, how many friends they have, and so on. It's all right there. We also can click on the summary tab. And this will tell us who has tweeted the most. Uh, it's sort of in order based on total number of tweets. And you can see a lot, a few people are tweeting quite a bit. And a lot of people have just used the hashtag one time. It's pretty typical. How many links there are, how many retweets, total number of tweets, unique tweets. We want those to be the same number. Replies, at replies, and so on. Um, and then in the dashboard area, you get all these nice graphs where we get tweets per minute or you know during the day what time they were how many of those tweets were replies and so on you can also see a little bar chart here and some other tweet volume over time and so on as you begin to archive over many 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 days you will see more so if you don't see anything in here you see just lines over here or you just see lines in this area like a straight line and whoosh it means you've only got really one day's worth of data because your hashtag is tweeting quite often. Um, don't worry about that. As you're doing this more often, you'll get more and more data. Now, uh, under the summary tab, actually this link is in several places, but since we're here, you can click on Explorer and then click on that when that pops up and a new tab will open. And you will get a beautiful constellation of users who have tweeted that particular hashtag. If you have a lot of tweets, you'll get something that looks like this. If you have a few, it will look a lot smaller. If you scroll in, you will see the full universe of tweets that you've got. Or it sort of looks like the Death Star in some ways. But it's sort of a, a, a universe of tweets. Uh, the way... <laughs> The way this works is uh, the bigger the name, the more interactive that person it is. The more they've replied or the more they're talking to people. The arrows that you're seeing, whoops, let me zoom in. 
The arrows that you see are the directions of the conversations, who is replying or mentioning to whom, and it tells you a little, it gives you a little visualization of what is happening in here. You can also click on a user's circle. Come on. And it will give you a little pop up and show you all of their individual tweets, which is really quite nice. As you're scrolling through this, it's sort of the, it recognizes your mouse functions. Uh, you can also replay the tweets. So you can see when this person is replying to whom and how often this is coming in. And uh, it's very, very cool to see this this happening. You can do this for any of the, the tweets. It's particularly nice if this person is a, is a big conver conversationalist because you'll see a lot of activity uh, taking place as we, we are seeing uh, right here. Uh, you can also let me close these down. You can see the top tweeters visually here. You can see top hashtags so your hashtag is most likely going to be the one with the most uh, because you are searching for tweets with that. But also you'll be able to learn about different hashtags that are associated with your hashtag. So like boss. Uh, Springsteen is known as the boss. So we have that as well. Uh, Bruce Buds. Uh, we know that uh, there is a group of fans who um, know each other quite well and, and go to concerts and meet up before and afterwards. And they call themselves Bruce Buds. Uh, we can also see other things that were related to what was going on. The Music Hairs was uh, a tribute. I'm sorry, a Music Hairs is an, an event where uh, a particular musician is, is, is awarded the, uh, given the Music Hair Honor of the Year. This year was Bob Dylan, so we see the, the Dylan hashtag in there as well. Springsteen performed at that, so we see that happening here as well. We also see things like Eric Church. Uh, Eric Church has that song, Springsteen, and people are always tweeting about that particular song. So we can learn about what is happening in these, in the, in the spaces with Springsteen by seeing the different hashtags listed here. We can see the top conversationalists. Very nice. Uh, we can search the archive for any sort of keyword that we want to search for. So if we're looking for... Um, any kind of keyword here. I can search for, uh, let's say, thunder. Typo. So here are the tweets that mention Thunder Road. Okay, and we can just see those individually. We can also just search for a particular username if we wanted to, to do that. Um, so you can narrow things down that way as well. And you can see the um, in the in the graphic, the replies are straight lines, the mentions are dotted lines, and retweets are also uh, dotted lines. We click on this. We will see how the retweets function. Okay, the retweets are blue, and how they function in this particular space, and that's that's really cool. Let's see, let's see if we can zoom in. And we can see how all the, the retweets are, are working and who's being retweeted and, and so on. And it, it takes some time to, to explore what's happening in here. Lots of retweeting happening amongst these, these particular folks. We could click on the mentions. And we'll see where the mentions are going as well. And you can spend some time exploring and see who's conversing with whom and, and so on. And you can go back to the archive and take a look at what is going on uh, in there. Uh, you can find the, the users by clicking on here. Um, you can find tweets based that are in the archive from that particular user. And you can even go and click on the user and you will be brought to their Twitter page and you will then be able to follow that particular user if you want to.
And I, as part of your assignment, I believe I'm asking you to do that for some of them. Okay, so this is how you set this up. Um, and this is basically how you set up the archive. Each time you do this, you'll go through the same process just about. Uh, if once, however, you will not need to set up the API key and the API secret every time. You will not have to verify that you're connected to Twitter. That's already done default for you. Um, if you want your archive to continue running, you can click update archive every hour. Although I would not recommend that if you have something that is very, very popular because you will reach 15,000 tweets pretty quickly. And also you'll have a lot of trouble opening it up. So for now, I think you can just stick with what you've got. If you've only got like 50 or 100 tweets, yes, you know, update it every hour. And once you reach a, a you know, about 1,000, you can stop, you can stop that updating. Okay. If you do have any questions or problems, please let me know. Uh, if not, enjoy your archive. See ya.